So building this thing was, was pretty pointless to do, and I knew that from the get-go. I was just testing for one very specific thing. I wanted to see if 6S with a little bit higher KV on a little tiny setup would exhibit any differences in control performance because of the 6S, because of the high KV, because of the theories and concepts that I've developed on the 5-inch quads. And I've always found that the smaller quads, these little 2-inch, 2.5-inch things, exhibit all of the issues of 5-inch much more than the 5 inch quads themselves so I was hoping that maybe I would feel something different unfortunately I felt nothing different at all and this quad was just horrid to fly I keep I seem to keep experimenting with these little tiny things from time to time I really love the idea of having something really small and tiny to carry around and fly but it just doesn't satisfy at all like it's just not as good and this one in particular was just for testing and what I found was pretty obvious results you could all probably guess what the results are first of all actually one one interesting result first of all it's totally fine on 4s it is two inch two inches a little bit small 2.5 inches a much much better sweet spot I would highly recommend 2.5 inch over two inch two inches great like it flies yeah it flies <laughs> but 2.5 inch actually begins to have a little bit better performance overall and as you if as you look at the disc area the total disc area of the prop like the prop disc area as you move up in size at that two inch to three inch mark it actually starts to increase quite quickly so that extra half an inch really does make a difference okay so on 4s this thing was totally fine on uh, 6s i'm using a 300 I think 350 or 300, 300 milliamp 6S battery. It's a 50 gram battery. Again, I'm not going for power, performance, flight time. I'm doing none of that stuff. I'm just looking at keeping the weight the same as 4S and also looking for that control improvement. Well, the power obviously was just not there because this battery cannot supply the amps to power 1108 motors, even 5000 kV 1108 motors. And I'm using quad blade props specifically because I was looking for that control improvement. And quad blades do give you more control than twin blades or tri blades. So again, I'm, I was just looking for that control improvement. Unfortunately, I found absolutely nothing. It did not improve control even a little bit. In fact, 6S felt exactly like 4S. 4S even gave me more flight time understandably because I was using a 500 milliamp 4S battery or 550 milliamp 4S battery but the quad also wasn't any faster which is telling me that these motors are probably oversaturated when you drive them with success or they're just they're just giving you the maximum performance on 4S already or probably even 3S so that there's really no point to go to 6S if you want to go for higher voltages on tiny little motors tiny little setups you do need larger motors and um, a friend of mine Aaron Chiotti I hope I said his name correctly he um, he has been doing micros more than I mean he's like the micro guy to me like I talk to him a lot and he's done micros more than he's done anything else and he has found that he likes the 1304 motors specifically the RCX 1304 motor quite a bit and he's been telling me I haven't tried it but he's been telling me that the 13 size motor is much 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 better for 2.5 inch I would trust him at that especially since I feel like this 1108 motor is kind of somewhat being oh crap <laughs> is somewhat being limited but yeah I, I mean I'm, I'm really gonna try to stay away from 2 inch 2.5 inch from now on it's just not it's just I just it's not fun for me so I'm just gonna try to avoid that a lot of people have asked me about this frame or would they want this frame this is just a really quick frame that I drew up. I really did a crappy job drawing it up too, as, as you can maybe see here. I had to like shave the corner of the, of the top plate to actually get the props to fit on because I didn't account for the prop size properly. And um, the camera doesn't really fit inside. And uh, yeah, it was just, it's a really poor design, but it is pretty sturdy. As you can see, my carbon fiber lines are running along the length of the, of the arms. So it is very strong. And I'm not really worried about it breaking, but it's also not going to be in production because it's just not that great of a frame. Okay, so another thing I want to show is I I recently got this thing in the mail. I have no idea what it is, and I have no idea who sent it to me. If you know what it is or you, you sent it to me, please let me know because I'm totally clueless. I think it's some sort of antenna, but I'm obviously not using it correctly here. So a little help would be much appreciated. Okay, so then this is a new quad that I built. And what I did with the 
internals of this quad is that I it's a, I was using the Emacs 6S 20x20 board because I was running 6S. And this board is, is perfectly good for, I would say, up to 4-inch and a light 5-inch racer. It's totally fine. I wouldn't, however, recommend it on a 5-inch Acro quad just because it's it just performs differently than the bigger the, than the ESCs with the bigger FETs. It just does. It just inherently does. It will run low KV 6S on 5-inch pretty fine, pretty okay, pretty satisfactory, but I, I wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't rely on it. And this is why it's not in this quad, because I took the guts out of this quad and I stuffed it into one of these frames, one of my larger frames, um, for another specific purpose, but whatever. I stuffed it into the, one of my larger frames and I just ran 6S, um, 1700 kV, the, the Hyperlite 22.7.5 motors on there, just because I had all this stuff lying around. And the ESE just did not power up at all. It just was gone. <laughs> all I did was unsolder the motor wires, solder on new motor wires, and the ESC stopped working. I have no idea why. It, I, I, just, I just don't know. So after the 4-in-1 burnt or just stopped working, I swapped it out for a Ori 32 that I had lying around because a couple people told me that it runs perfectly fine on 6S, so I'm running it on 6S. But what I'm showing you here is the distinction between 4S and 6S on the same quad. These are the Hyperlite 2207.5 1722kV motors, so they are rather low kV for me. I prefer higher kV, 18, 1850kV on these, these kinds of motors. And um, I'm showing you that it runs fantastic on 4S, and yes, 6S is a little bit faster, but it's still great on 4S as well, just to show you the versatility of the quad on both voltages. And I kind of recommend now that anything you build should be a 6S quad that you run 4S on if you want. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that in the next video. But just look at the distinction between the two. Also, I was playing with the GoPro Pro Tune settings. And the last time I played with these settings was like two years ago. And I was hoping that something had improved in the firmware software or something. I set it here to a fixed shutter of 160 frame per second. And I was hoping that it would switch to ISO dynamically on its own to get the exposure that's good for the setting with no ND filter because I was trying to see what I could do without an ND filter. When you set the GoPro to any kind of restriction or limitation, it doesn't seem to move through the other settings as fluidly. If you tell it to do full auto, it moves through ISO and shutter speed however it wants and I'm pretty sure it has some algorithm in there that is kind of telling it to not drop the shutter speed too low because it will give a lot of blur. Um, I think 160 frames per second gives the best overall blur. I want that much blur. I don't want more than that. But when you do restrict the GoPro, like I said, it doesn't it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's it's honestly pretty laughable the creative control that GoPro gives us on these cameras. And I'm just going back to auto because that's what I use it for, and that's what I'm going to stick to because the, the GoPro just can't handle protein. If you are flying or filming or something in one setting and not a dynamic situation where things are changing constantly lighting conditions are changing constantly, yeah, you can use that protein, awesome, do great. Or if you just want to get flat colors and leave everything else auto, great, that's good. But otherwise, it, it's a waste of time. It's honestly a waste of time. Like, it, it's not even worth the effort of managing these settings because you don't know what you're going to get out of the GoPro. You can't tell until you watch it after the fact. And it's impossible to say what is and isn't going to work. It's just, for me, it's a waste of time. I'm just really annoyed by that. Okay, another thing that while I have this quad here I want to talk about is motor wires. <sighs> motor wires and, and convenience of use. So in racing, it's not uncommon to crack an arm, break a motor, rip some wires, and do all that jazz. So I've been wanting to have an all plug-and-play quad from since the beginning, the beginning of time. I've wanted like an all plug-and-play quad, but it just doesn't seem to be happening. Maybe one day I'll make it happen, but one thing that is annoying are the motor wires and not having a connector for the motor wires. People have said multiple things about why there shouldn't be a motor connector for motor wires. Things like if you have a connector, then you have a, a electrical kind of noise and whatnot, ambiguity going on. It'll change the magnetic whatever. It'll do something which, I mean, we have connectors on the other parts of the quad. I don't see any of that happening. I think connectors will be fine. We did used to use bullet connectors on old quads. And we still do on, on modern quads, on, on aerial photography platform quads. I, I don't really see it being a problem. And I would like to propose that we consider maybe using 
this connector. So this is an XT30, but there's also an MR30 connector. The MR30 connector is just three prongs, three XT30 prongs side by side, especially on 6S. I do not see this being a problem with like with respect to the amp flow or any of the power flow through the wires. And if you hold this up against motor wires, it's actually not, it, it will fit on the arm. It'll fit on the arm nicely. So my camera would not be blown out. So what I'm proposing here is that we maybe consider just, just, just the thought, just consider having motors that have the XT30 plug already soldered on at a fixed length of maybe five centimeters and then have the other side, the, the remainder of the XC30 plug dongle kind of with wires. And so once you solder this to your ESE board, if you need to swap a motor, you just unplug it and plug in a new motor. And that would make it much more convenient. Now, I understand these connectors do weigh something and they weigh almost nothing, honestly. It's like 0 0.7, 0 0.6 grams, not even 0.6 grams per pairing for these two, not even 0.6 grams. So you're going to be adding a little bit of weight to the quad. But if you're racing, especially now with 6S, people don't see weight as, a, as, as big of an issue. And I tend to agree with respect to it's more piloting than it is the weight. So it doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, I mean, at the race I was at this weekend, people were doing just fine on 4S with high, with low KV motors compared to people on 6S with high KV motors. So yeah, just something to consider. Uh, next thing is an update on my Tiny Hawk. I have still been flying this thing like regularly. I have broken all of these struts except for this one. And uh, I've glued together three of these struts. And this one, you can see there's glue on two of them. And one of them is broken. And this is, oh, no, this one's got them broken too. So I've broken a lot of struts on my Tiny Hawk. And it still flies excellent. Like, there's still no problem with how it flies. Um, it's an awesome, I'm, I'm truly impressed with this thing. I have, I have honestly smashed the absolute bejesus out of it. And it is still flying like it was when I took it out of the box. These are the original set of props. I have not bent, broken, lost a prop at all. I have been waiting for the Mobula 7. I haven't gotten it yet. I don't know why I haven't. I just haven't really put a lot of effort into getting one. But the next time I'm at Piraflip, I'm just going to take one off the shelf and, and you know use it. Um, my concerns with the Mobula 7 is that it's using the B-Wolf frame or something the same frame that I used to build this little guy and this thing has broken like this frame has broken like three times already you can see I've taped it because I didn't have any clear tape with me I've already taped it with electrical tape here um, I'm not really um, enthusiastic about the durability of this frame and that is the primary concern that I do have with the Modula 7 which people are saying is such an amazing quad I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it but I am genuinely concerned about the durability because um, it is a 2s quad and for indoor flying you are going to be hitting like hard surfaces and this is one S quad and I'm still breaking it. So I'm not really too enthusiastic about the durability. Um, plus I have absolutely no problem with one S on the tiny Hawk. It flies awesome. And in addition, the Mobula seven has an F three chip in it. This one has an F four chip in it. And I know people often say F three, F four doesn't really matter, but it really does matter quite a bit, especially on these tiny, little, tiny, tiny, whoop, tiny little platforms. It really does make a difference. Um, I know that the Alien whoops are using the F0 processor. I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea, but apparently it performs similar to an F4. So, hey, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's performing really well. Plus, they're using uh, their own custom silverware firmware, silver flight, silver whoop something firmware, which is specific for that platform. So it, it performs really stellar. But compared this F4 compared to the F3 on this, is significantly better. It is significantly, significantly better. These two have very similar performance. These are really high KV motors. They're 22,000 KV motors on on, uh, on 1S. Also, the wider motors on this are way just... The Tiny Hawk flies so much better than any of these little whoops that I've had. Uh, so I took apart my Snapper 70, 75 or whatever, and I put it on this little carbon frame that I drew up, which I also did a really awful draw, job of drawing up because I can't 
access the USB port and I had to mount it with the, I was planning on mounting the board right side up so that I can access all the ports from the top, but the wires on the motors weren't long enough and I'm way too lazy to extend those motor wires. So I just flipped the board over and if I need to access the USB port, I'll just take the thing apart. It's just two screws. And it flies awful. It flies absolutely awful. I've been waiting for the um, 65 millimeter King Kong props to arrive, which I haven't gotten yet. I was hoping to get it by, by yesterday, but I haven't. Um, a couple of people have offered to send me some. I appreciate that very much, but if I didn't have it by today, I was pretty much just going to wait, and it doesn't really matter. With these little props, it's, pr it's like a micro X-Class, like a tiny little X-Class, because it's really long arms with really tiny props. It flies really awful, just just awful. <laughs> it just flies really awful. It has no control. It has nothing. I I hope that the motors are powerful enough to spin the 65 millimeter props. A while ago, I did a video on a little brushed thing that I made with those 65 millimeter props, and that was pretty fun. It did not have the best control at all, but it did fly, and it was pretty fun to fly. So I'm hoping that the brushless version is better than that and the main reason why i'm trying to do this is because it's really simple to just build these things because it's all one board like you just put one board on the thing and you go and if it is any if it is decent in any way i am going to redesign this frame so that you can mount everything and still access the usb port because it's a really cool little tiny quad and i was originally planning on putting the mobula 7 platform on this frame because it does do 2s and i have all the parts of that thing coming as well but I mean, Jesus, the shipping just takes forever. Lastly, for some reason, my um, soldering has gotten really crappy lately, and I don't understand why. I've been soldering for a lot of years, like since I was really, really young, and I've always gotten pretty good solder joints, but all of a sudden, the past couple of months, my solder joints are looking like this, which is absolutely horrible, just just unacceptable. And if you could see my um, battery connector lines, they're, they're like 10 times worse. It's just like pasty solder on top of pasty solder. And I'm constantly checking and pulling and tugging and making sure I don't have cold solder joints that are going to come apart in flight. Um, I don't know why I switched my solder like four times. I used three different kinds of uh, 60, 40, 40, 60 solder. And I also got the most popular solder on Banggood, which has sold so many. Um, it's actually... 6337 so it's technically worse than the 60 the 4060 stuff that i was using before which i traditionally liked a lot and i just kept buying the same brand but i, I feel like maybe i got a bad batch it just ruined my soldering iron so i picked up a new soldering iron the ts100 which then somebody told me that the ts80 is actually the newer model and performs differently somehow i don't know maybe it's better or something this is actually a really neat little soldering iron i'm really impressed with it it really does perform really stellar really really stellar and it's really smart too um here i'll take the wrapper off for you Ooh la la and um so one of the annoyances with this thing is that if you get it from banggood it doesn't come with the power wire and it also doesn't fit the wire to your goggles so if you have a goggle wire lying around it doesn't work with the soldering iron so if you do want to buy it, I highly recommend ordering it from Piroflip because they send it with the wire. Just one of the perks of ordering from Piroflip. And that's it for this video. Um, I have a lot more to say about these props and in general about all the props that have recently come out because there's so many. So that's going to be in the next video coming up. I think I'm going to try to get it out today.